Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesday. I'm your host, Paula Taylor, and this is episode 51. So before we start tonight, I have a brief announcement about next week's episode. So next week is episode 52. That is one year, one full year of these Wind Down Wednesday practices. So as I mentioned last week, I am planning on doing a live kirtan practice, but what I didn't know last week was that I was going to write a brand new kirtan specifically for this event. So I have a world premiere kirtan that I will be sharing with you next week. Kirtan is a call and response meditation song or chant, and it's a wonderful way to meditate. It's one of the first ways I learned how to meditate outside of my yoga practice was through these call and response chants. And you don't have to be a singer for this. As I say many times in this practice, this is not about aesthetics. This is not about how beautiful your voice sounds. This is about moving energy through sound, and we're going to talk about that as we often do tonight. So tonight, we're going to talk about addressing the fear of moving forward. And a few weeks ago, we talked about recognizing fear and essentially the fear of fear and how sometimes fear is so big that we can't even look at it. We can't even acknowledge it. So in my own life, I'm looking at the possibility of making a big change in my external circumstances. My husband and I have been talking about this for years kind of, and it seems like we might be getting to a point where we're making this change might actually be possible. And I realized I was aware of my fear around this issue. I recognized my fear. I acknowledged it, but I was afraid to let go of the fear. I was afraid of letting go of the fear. First, I was afraid of the fear. Then I was afraid of letting go of the fear. And So it's holding me back. So essentially what that means is that I'm afraid of this change. I'm afraid of moving forward. And that's a big fear. Letting go of fear and moving forward opens up a a huge number of possibilities. It really opens up this realm of possibility to us. And we start thinking through all of these possible outcomes. We get paralyzed with indecision. And anyone who knows me personally knows that I have a problem with indecision. And indecision is really fear. It's fear of making the wrong choice. It's fear of consequences. And under that, as we talk about so often on this show, it's really about those core belief fears. Fear of survival, some sort of survival-related fear, a scarcity-related fear that there's not going to be enough, a fear about worth, that we don't deserve good things to happen to us, so we start expecting the worst. (sighs) So fear of moving forward and fear of fear itself, both of these fear things we've talked about in recent weeks can lead us to get stuck. Sometimes it can lead us to feeling extremely stuck. Sometimes we just feel like, oh, I'm kind of in a rut. Sometimes it's disguised as a feeling of being comfortable. So change leads to discomfort. Any kind of growth tends to lead to at least a little bit of discomfort, sometimes a lot of discomfort. So sometimes being too comfortable is a sign that we're afraid to move forward, that we are stuck a little bit in a rut, that we're we're afraid of letting go of our fear. And this can be very powerful and it can be very heavy. So we talked a few weeks about how tricky fear is. We talked about how fear plays tricks on our minds. And this is another trick that fear plays because it can trick us into staying put when what we really need, what what we're really being called to do is to move forward. And the fear wants this. So fear is self-perpetuating. It feeds off of itself. 
And it also multiplies and reverberates in our energetic field. So we have this energetic field that I talk about frequently. I'm going to talk a little more about it tonight. But there's a physical energetic field. There's an emotional energetic field. And then there's the mental energetic field. And and all of this is energy. All of this is spiritual matter. But we do have in this physical lifetime kind of a, a finite area that we carry around our bodies. And so when we have fear, and then that fear kind of feeds, and then it multiplies, it starts to reverberate in this field. And pretty soon, it's all we can do. It's all we can see. It's all we can run away from. Because a lot of times we don't see the fear. We don't look at the fear. We just get paralyzed. It's like that fight, flight, or freeze. Sometimes we end up in that freeze mode and we're completely stuck. We can't move in any direction. We feel paralyzed or we feel like there's a weight on us. We get totally stuck because of the magnitude of this fear that we're carrying around. So how do we address this fear? Sometimes we talk a lot about topics on here and tonight we're really going to talk about what do we do about this? How do we fix this? Of course, there's nothing to fix, but how do we release this fear? How do we release the fear of letting go of the fear so that we can start to move forward? And we do this through spiritual processing. If you're unfamiliar with spiritual processing, please go to my website. It's paulataylorenergy.com. It's the most recent blog post. It's such a powerful process. So I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but please go and read about it in detail because it really can be life-changing. It has been completely life-changing for me. And I think you'll see as I talk through this, there's a step in spiritual processing that we've kind of been missing. And, and sometimes that, that third step of spiritual processing is really what's going to propel us out of this rut, out of this stuckness that we get in, that we've we feel like there's no way out a lot of times. So the first step of spiritual awareness, of spiritual processing is awareness. I feel like I do that every time. The first step of spiritual processing is awareness. And that's what we talked about a few weeks ago when we talked about recognizing fear. So if we're not aware of something, then we can't address it. And, and that's where that fear of fear comes in. When we have these big, giant fears like the elephant in the room and we're afraid to even look at them, that's what that first step is for. Oh, I see the fear. I recognize it as fear now. I name this fear. I figure out what's at the base of this fear because a lot of times on top of it, there's shame and guilt and anger and, and all these other kind of secondary emotions that are really masking fear because that fear wants us not to see it because how can it perpetuate and multiply if we look directly at it and we learn how to move through it. So that's step one. So step two of spiritual processing is mental processing. And this is where so many of us get stuck. This is where our thoughts and our fears start to spiral. So we recognize our fear. We start to think about our fear. We start to have more fear. And it's like this vicious cycle and we get stuck there. And this can become a never-ending loop. It leads to more fear. It leads to more shame. It leads to more guilt. And a lot of us are stuck at this level. And moving on to that third step is crucial. Moving on to that third step in spiritual processing is what's going to get us out of that rut, out of that stuckness, out of that fear of letting go of our fear. So the third step of spiritual processing is physical and emotional processing. And Physical and emotional processing are completely tied together. You cannot remove the physical processing, which is where a lot of us get stuck with the emotional processing. So mental processing is all up here. This is all in the mental space. For emotional processing, we need to be in the physical body. 
because emotions are held in the physical body. And no one teaches you this. This is something that I had to learn the hard way, that a lot of us learned the hard way. So all of the emotions we feel are carried in the physical body or in that physical energetic field around the body. And this is where sometimes the semantics of words gets a little bit confusing, but energy is physical. It is actually tangible. It is actually measurable. There's a lot of research going on about the electromagnetic field. This is a physical area around the body within the body. We've talked a little bit about chakras before. Those are physical spaces of energy in the body. And emotions can get stuck anywhere in the body. I think I told this story once before. Many years ago, I was receiving rolfing, which is a type of body work. And the therapist was working on the front of my leg, kind of like in the shin area. And all of a sudden I felt all this emotion bubble up and I started crying and I was like, what was that? It didn't come with a memory. It didn't come, you know, as this flashback to trauma. It was just an emotion stored in my body that I released. That's a very simple example of that. So that's one of the ways that we physically release emotional energy is through body work, is through energy work, is through touch, like bio-touch. So that's one way to get into this physical emotional processing is to go see a professional and receive some sort of body work. Another way to do this is through physical movement. Exercise is fantastic for moving energy. And What you'll find at the end of this physical, emotional processing step is sometimes that release does happen. So in my example, I was receiving body work. So that was that physical processing. And then boo-hoo-hoo, I started crying. That was the emotional release. That was that emotional energy being released from my physical body through that body work. So when you're doing exercise with intention... I say that very frequently. It doesn't matter what kind of exercise it is, but it needs to be done with intention. I love to do yoga. There's a fantastic meditation by Osho, that's O-S-H-O, called. it's just called Kundalini Meditation. You can find it on any of the streaming platforms. And there's four stages. The first stage is kind of this fast music, and the whole purpose is just to shake your entire body. And then the second stage is more smooth, and that's to smoothly move your body. And all of that starts to move all of that emotional energy that we're storing in the physical body so that it can be released, so that it can finally be processed. We're not in the mental space. We're in the physical body releasing emotional energy. And then the third and fourth stages of that meditation are complete stillness and silence. And that's extremely important because when we shake all of this energy loose, we have to give ourselves a little bit of space to allow that release to happen, to absorb that shift in our energy. One of my favorite forms of yoga is kundalini yoga, and I mention it fairly frequently And if you're familiar with kundalini yoga, it looks a lot like calisthenics. It tends to be repetitive motions that are that that happen over and over again for a period of time with sometimes coordinated breathing. And the whole point of kundalini yoga is to move energy, is to rise, get that kundalini energy to rise from the base of the spine up and out the top of the head. So the exercises are very repetitive and a lot of times they're, they, you move a lot more quickly than you do in sort of traditional hatha yoga. And the point of that, again, is to free up that emotional energy that's trapped in the physical body huh, so that we can finally release it, so that we can finally let it go. And of course, at the end of every kundalini practice, there's some sort of meditation. It might be a silent shavasana meditation, it might be a kirtan, it might be some sort of a chant, but the purpose of the stillness at the end of that movement, again, is to 
allow for any kind of release that's going to happen, and then to let the physical, emotional, and mental bodies adjust to the shift. Because again, that fear does not want us to let it go. It wants to stay in our energetic field. So even if we do something with intention and we shake everything up, if we then kind of run away from everything we've shaken up and we don't give it a chance to process and release, then we might be kind of back to that step two where we're stuck in that mental space, thinking, thinking, thinking. And then, of course, the final way to release that emotional energy, physically release that emotional energy, is through sound. And I'm guessing you knew we were going there because we go there so frequently. And that's such a huge gift because not everybody is able-bodied in a way that they can move. Not everyone can get up and jump up and down and shake their body and move. And you can do movement even if you're in a chair, but some people can't even do that. Not everybody is privileged enough to have access to a professional body worker, but every single person on this planet has some sort of a voice box to make sound. There is some way to produce sound within your body. That's the best way to do it. That's the most powerful way to do it is to do it from your own body. And if you can't do that if you're afraid of doing that or there's some reason that you can't make sound. You can listen to sound. You can bring something like a bowl into your space and that reverberation, that vibration of that bowl, especially if I'm doing it in a way that I can feel the vibration, starts to move that emotional energy so that we can physically release it, so that we can move forward, so that we can let go of that fear of moving forward or let go of the fear of letting go. That was a little bit more complicated of a title. So I went with the fear of moving forward. <sighs> so what are we going to do in our meditation tonight? I'm not exactly sure. I'm never exactly sure. But my intention for this meditation is to lead you through, in a meditative way, those three steps of spiritual processing. So awareness, the recognition of whatever the fear is that you're holding right now. Maybe it's that giant fear that you haven't even looked at yet. And you don't have to run right over and give it a big hug and kiss. You can do this in increments, in stages. You know, you can peekaboo your eyeball through your fingers and just kind of take a brief look at that and that is still progress. So don't think that you have to be all in on this. Of course, if you are, that's fantastic. But do what you can do. Be where you can be. Take a look at the fear. That'll be step one. Then step two, we're going to do a little bit of visualization, a little bit of mental processing of that fear. But then we're going to move past that fairly quickly because we don't want to get stuck in step two. That's one of the reasons that I became a body worker, an energy worker, rather than doing my uh, doctoral program in clinical psychology is because I was starting to have this awareness that there was so much more than just that mental layer. You can go to therapy and of course it's fantastic and when you're dealing with trauma talking through it is really important but that crucial step that we sometimes miss because we tend to compartmentalize everything you know we have a physical doctor maybe we have a mental doctor our psychiatrist we don't have a spiritual doctor a lot of times some of us do if you're in, if you're in a religion you might have some sort of a spiritual advisor or counselor in that way but we need to connect all of those. We need to stop seeing things as separate and start seeing that holistic view. So getting stuck in that mental processing where you're just going over and over and over something in your brain and, and you know, maybe it's bouncing back and forth between you and another person in a professional or personal capacity, that's not the last step. 
the last step is probably the most important step. You can't get there without the first two steps. That's kind of how steps work. You can't get to the top of the stairway from the very bottom unless you have go-go gadget legs. And most of us don't. Most of us have tiny little baby steps to get where we're going. That final step is crucial. Releasing that physical, emotional energy from our physical and emotional bodies. And what you will find is that that releases that mental chatter. That's kind of, that's that fear kind of bouncing around, that mental chatter. And when we process physically and emotionally through the physical body, ah, that mental, mental chatter has a chance to calm. That fear has a chance to go somewhere else. And instead of that reverberation of fear that feeds off of itself, we finally get a little bit of stillness and a little bit of quiet. And that's when we have that opportunity to have the emotional release that can be that final step out of finally spiritually processing something that we've been working on. And sometimes we repeat these steps, especially with a big trauma or a core belief. You're not going to do this one time and then be done with it. I mean, you might, but chances are you're going to kind of come back to this practice. But when you find yourself getting stuck in that rut or when you find yourself thinking thoughts like, I'm stuck, I'm never getting get out of here. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to help myself. Come to this physical practice, whether it's movement, whether it's receiving movement in some way from someone else through body work, or whether it's using sound, intuitive sound, prescribed sound, practicing those primordial chakra tones, even listening to a song with intention can start to move that energy. Singing along is even better. All right. I talked a lot tonight, but I'm very passionate about this, and I really fully believe that this can be life-changing if you really start to put this into practice, if you really add that third step of processing into those first two steps, you will start to notice a huge difference. You will start to notice that you're less afraid of letting go of your fear, that you're less afraid of moving forward, that all of those multitudinous possibilities of things that could go wrong or things that could go right, all of that mental chatter can come down and you can start to operate in flow. You can start to connect to that divine energy and you can start to make decisions from a place of ease rather than from a place of fear. So let's meditate together. Take a deep breath in through your nose, sigh it out, allow that ha sound to flow effortlessly from the top of that breath all the way down. Do that at least three times. And then allow the top of the head, that crown chakra, to open. Invite that beautiful, supportive, unconditional love that is the antithesis of fear. Invite that in through the top of the head. Let it fill your head and your neck, your chest and your upper back. Let it come into your arms and your hands. Allow that golden light to flow down through the chest and upper back into the mid belly and the mid back. Let this unconditional love come into your low belly and your low back. Let it come into your hips and your pelvis. Take another nice deep breath in through the nose and as you ha it out, as you sigh it out, allow that energy to flow into your thighs, your upper legs, into your knees to your lower legs and feet.
Allow this soothing light, this unconditional love, this divine energy that is your true being to fill your entire body now. Let it fill your energetic space, your physical energetic space, your mental energetic space, and your emotional energetic space. Feel yourself settle, take an extra breath or two into any areas of tension or discomfort you're noticing. And as you're ready, I want you to look at your fear. And again, you can just peek at it. You can kind of give it a side eye. You can look directly at it. Just acknowledge that there is fear there. You don't even have to name it if you don't want to for this meditation. But do acknowledge it. Do bring it into your awareness. Bring your energetic sanctuary into your space. Let yourself sit in the most beautiful, safest space you can imagine. That's your sanctuary. And let yourself come to some water in your sanctuary tonight. It doesn't have to be any place specific. It can be your waterfall of joy. It can be a river or a pond, a lake or an ocean. Let your intuition guide you to a body of water. And notice that you have a bottle in your hand. And in the other hand, you have a scroll. You're going to put a message in this bottle. And on this scroll, you're going to write or draw or just telepathically place your fears. Maybe it's that fear of your fear. Maybe it's fear of change. Maybe it's that fear of moving forward, fear of letting go of your fear. Maybe it's a fear of survival, of not feeling secure. Maybe it's a fear of not having enough, that scarcity fear. Maybe it's a fear of not being enough, of not being worthy, of not being deserving. Whatever fear or fears come up, put them all onto this page. And don't get too much into this mentally. Just put them there. You don't have to sort through each of these and name them out. Just let them all be on this piece of paper, this scroll. And as you're ready, roll the scroll up, put it in the bottle. Don't cap the bottle because these fears are going away. We don't want to keep them in any way. And as you're ready, throw the bottle as far as you can into your body of water. And just know that this body of water is meant to absorb these fears, is meant to recycle these fears for the highest good. That's why we didn't cap the bottle. These fears will leak out into this body of water and be transformed into unconditional love and light. And then let that go. You can stay where you are in your energetic sanctuary. You can come to your safe spot, whatever feels right to you. But forget completely about the bottle. It's gone. And now pay attention to your physical body. Notice where you're holding fear in your physical body. There may be one place in particular that comes into your consciousness. You might feel like it's everywhere. That's fine too. And now I want you to move your physical body, if you can, as much as you can, in any way that calls to you. Perhaps you just begin to shake your arms and your hands a little bit. Maybe you pick each leg up and kind of shake your leg. Maybe you move your torso in your head as well, you do a little shaking with the whole body. Maybe you just stick with the hands and arms, and that's fine. That's a great way to discharge energy if you can't move the rest of your body. 
and really shake here something, anything, even if it's just a finger or a toe, whatever you can move, maybe you're just moving your head back and forth, don't hurt your neck, but move something. Maybe you get up and you're dancing around the room or you're jumping up and down. And as you're ready, you can release that movement and then bring a different kind of movement into your body. You can see I'm shaking my head back and forth. This is completely intuitive. Whatever calls to you here, maybe you're still shaking. Maybe you're dancing around. But let that movement fill your entire body. You don't have to move your body, but let the feeling of the movement come into all the parts of your body. And breathe deeply here. We're stirring up this energy. So if you have emotions come up, just let them come up. Let the release happen. Breathe through it. Move through it. As you're ready, let your body come still. You can see I'm doing some shoulder shrugs as I come into stillness. Any last movements that are calling to you before you come into stillness here. And now I want you to make a noise. I don't care what kind of a noise it is. Scream, yell, shout, hum, whisper. This can be a really strange noise. This can be a song. The weirder the noise, the more intuitive the noise, the more effective it is. No one's watching you. No one's listening to you. So let yourself make this noise out loud. Boom! Boom! Who? 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 Boom! Boom! Who? Keep making noise for the next 30 seconds or so. And then come totally still. Take a nice deep breath, sigh it out. And let your body come into stillness. Let your mind come into stillness. And notice what comes up. Maybe you just have some blissful silence for the first time in a long time. Maybe that emotion you stirred up is releasing. You don't have to hold on to that emotion. Let it go, just like that bottle. Let it come up and then let it go. 
Let it drift off in that beautiful, purifying water of unconditional love that transforms our fear to love. Maybe you feel like you'd like to repeat this and you can come back and do this as many times as you'd like. You can do this on your own using any kind of music or sound that calls to you. Allow your true identity to come forth here that unconditional love that you are made of. Don't let fear trick you into missing your true nature, which is love, which is connection, which is flow. Allow yourself to flow into what comes next for you physically, emotionally, and mentally. Allow yourself to claim your birthright of being so loved and so worthy and so safe and so secure. Underneath all of those fears is love. The essence of who you are is love. Let it flow through your body now. Let it flow through your emotional body now. All the areas in the physical body that you're storing emotion all the areas in your energetic field where you're storing emotion, let that all become love. Allow that love to flow into your mental body, into your brain space, your mind space. Everything becoming love in this present moment. And remember what this feels like. You can come back here you will come back here. You deserve to be here in love, to be loved, to be loving. As you're ready, you can gently allow that crown chakra to close or leave it open for your highest good. And one last time, allow that unconditional love and light of divine energy and flow come down through your head and your face and your jaw, through your neck and your throat and your shoulders, through your upper arms, through your elbows, forearms, and hands. Let that beautiful sacred love flow into your chest and your upper back, into your belly and your mid and low back, your low belly. Allow this love to flow into your hips and your pelvis, into each thigh and each knee, into your lower legs and your ankles and your feet. 
recognize that you are a divine being made of love. Fear is a trick. Only love is real and it is your nature. Ooh. As you're ready, let yourself begin to move ever so slightly. Maybe wiggle your fingers and your toes, your wrists and ankles. Move your head and neck around a little bit. Slowly coming all the way back into yourself here and affirm with me out loud, I am fully present in my body. I am fully present in my body and I am love. I am fully present in my body and I release all fear. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for having the courage to participate in this practice and to show up for yourself and the rest of us who are practicing with you. Thank you for holding that space. Thank you for allowing yourself to bravely move energy each week. Have a beautiful rest of your night. Have a fearless rest of your week. And I will see you next week for the one year anniversary of Wind Down Wednesday.